We're joined now in Lviv by two experienced diplomats in the region, Christina Kavin, the acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine and the Charge d'Affaires. And we want to welcome Doug Loop, our newest ABC News contributor, former U.S. ambassador to NATO. Thanks to both of you for joining us this morning. And I, I want to start with you. You've given me permission to call you Christina. We've been negotiating with the Russians for months, and yet here we are on the verge of a possible invasion. So what could possibly work on the diplomatic front at this point? Well, despite uh, President Putin's continued buildup of troops on the border, aggressive rhetoric, and now false flag operations and flooding of disinformation uh, globally, we still hope and wish that President Putin would make the decision to take the diplomatic path. We have offered uh, ways that we can address some of his uh, security concerns. We've him, given him papers laying those out. And this it would really be an easy decision for him. All he has to do is decide to take the diplomatic path. So that's what we're hoping and urging him to do. And, and yet you have said you think what Putin wants is control of Ukraine. NATO's not going to let that happen. U.S. is not going to let that happen in any kind of negotiations. So, so how does that actually work? Well, ultimately, President Putin has to decide uh, not to take a path that will be disastrous. Disastrous for Ukraine, of course, with the potential for thousands of casualties, but also disastrous for Russia, not only because Ukraine will fight and Russia will face casualties too, but also because Russia will face devastating sanctions by the United States and other partners and allies if they take this path. Doug. You're out of the business of diplomacy now. So do you think there's any possibility or do you see an invasion? No, I don't think it's inevitable. Uh, my uh, West Point classmate Lloyd Austin the other day said uh, there's still an option for President Putin to decide otherwise. And uh, it's not inevitable. Uh, he has a lot of um, options short of invasion. And I think, frankly, that those sorts of options, cyber attacks, further destabilizing in the Donbass, are much more likely than a full-scale invasion. And, Doug, you were NATO ambassador in 2014 when Russia invaded and annexed Crimea. What, what do you think Putin learned from that experience? Well, I think he learned that uh, surprise is an important factor. In 2014, he took us by surprise, and he seized Crimea, then illegally annexed it. He destabilized the Donbass while we were on our back foot, uh, which surprises me now because he's done exactly the opposite. He spent weeks, if not months, to amass this large potential invasion force, and he has sacrificed surprise. So it's uh, curious to me, and I'm not sure that he's decided uh, that an invasion is the way to go. As you know, the president has said he has decided. Right. If this happens, and, and first of all, I want to know whether you think it's, it's practically a certainty of point. How does that conflict spread beyond here? Can it spread beyond here? Will we be in a new Cold War? Right. Well, first of all, I would say uh, that uh, I agree with President Biden that it is uh, likely to happen, that, the pres that President Putin has made a decision. Uh, that doesn't mean it can't be stopped. It doesn't mean President Putin can't change his mind. But I do think that right now uh, he's moving towards a large-scale invasion. So then the question is, um, what does that mean? It means not only is Ukraine a threat, but really all of the global order, and certainly Eastern Europe is a threat, because if President Putin is bold enough and brazen enough and foolish enough to do this, uh, who knows what else he'll be willing to do. And, and, and Doug, I know you said you don't think it's necessarily a certainty, but when you hear them say it's a certainty and you think of the intelligence and they put out all this intelligence, you can't help thinking of Iraq, which you have great experience in there, 9-11 and Afghanistan, where the intelligence clearly failed. So could they be wrong? Well, sure. Uh, the intelligence may be wrong. Uh, of course, what the analysts are looking at, Martha, are both the capabilities, things that are easy to measure, like photographs of troops massed along the border and so forth. But they're all tr also trying to assess President Putin's intentions. And this gets very foggy. This gets, he holds his cards very close to the vest. Uh, it's much harder to assess intentions. Um, I think that uh, he has enjoyed the last several weeks of attention. 
uh, he has already destabilized Ukraine in, by way of its, uh, the impact he's had on the Ukrainian economy. Uh, and it's not clear to me that he wants to incur all the consequences that Christina laid out, plus this most severe consequence, which is trying to control the 40 million people in Ukraine. So I, I'm not sure. And, and, and I want to talk about the people of Ukraine. Obviously, it's a day where people are out shopping. It, it almost, almost seems like they're not on the brink of war. But, but really talk about the cost here. W what would happen to this nation? Right. First of all, you know, Ukrainians have been living with war now for eight years. Russia is already in Crimea and the Donbass, and there's a, there's a hot war in Donbass where 14,000 Ukrainians have been killed. So uh, the Ukrainians do have, uh, you know, a tough constitution. They're used to this, and that's why you see they're not panicking. They're not, uh, you know, hiding in their houses. They're going out and enjoying life all they can. Um, but Ukrainians will fight. Ukrainians are extremely patriotic. They love their country, and they're not afraid to fight. We've seen that in the past. And if the Russians come in, the Ukrainians will fight. And there could be very heavy casualties on both sides. The human cost of this could be astronomical and, and horrendous. And all of that will be on the shoulders of Vladimir Putin. And refugees. We were at the border crossing yesterday That's and right. saw how difficult it is to get across. I can't imagine what will happen if refugees start streaming towards those borders. Right. There is, uh, there are some, uh, is some speculation that there would be a large flood of refugees from eastern Ukraine to west, either to stay in the west or to go further into Poland and other uh, EU member states to the west. It, it, Obviously, that would be very destabilizing, um, not only for western Ukraine, but also for the countries that uh, would be taking in these refugees. And, and Doug, I want to, you are a retired three-star general as well, spent your life in the army. I, I just want you to have the final word here on, on how you think, if they do invade, if the Russians do come in here and they go into Kyiv, how does this end? What, what will this country look like over, over days or weeks or months or years? Well, obviously, the most severe consequences, as Christina has laid out, will be right here in Ukraine. And Ukrainians will be first to suffer, and they'll suffer the most. But the consequences won't stay here in Ukraine. Uh, there'll be the refugee flow that we've already talked about. There'll be severe economic impacts. Look, the energy markets are already tight and energy prices high. This will spike the energy prices globally. This is a global market. And then, of course, the refugees that are flowing out of Ukraine are flowing into NATO countries. So there's a potential of military spillover as well. Um, you know, you asked me earlier, Martha, about intelligence. In this case, we're settling on the worst case analysis. And frankly, we can all hope that that intelligence is wrong. I think we're all hoping for the same thing, but we're standing by. Thanks very much to both of you for joining us. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.